This scene broke me. It broke me as a person. Arcane did a wonderful job of doing more emotional damage to me in just nine episodes than my depression has for my entire existence. Silco meeting Vander at his statue, contemplating his old brother, and realizing his failure to Jinx and to Zahn. Just, I have so much to talk about with this scene. The best way I can describe it is the moment that Arcane became human. But first, it's impossible for me to talk about this scene without the context surrounding it. Silco was a complex character that breaking down everything about him in just one video would be doing him a disservice. Specifically, I want to explore the moment that the show became human and the moment that a villain became a broken man. Silco has been lauded as the best character in Arcane by many for good reason. He's enigmatic, compelling, sympathetic, and just overall a good-ass complicated villain. But is he really a villain? Sure, he does horrible things, he isn't a good person, is willing to sacrifice people around him to achieve his goals, eh, it's not looking good for him. But he isn't the classic mustache twirling <laughs> cartoon villain. He's much softer, more corrupting, more sinister in the simple fact that he's human and he's doing what he thinks is right. And the terrifying thing? You kind of agree with him. You empathize with him, you understand him, and he kind of has a point. Sympathy for the devil, if you will. When Silco was first introduced as that classic cartoon villain, I thought, oh boy, here we go. Another pretentious Bioshock-looking idiot spewing out drivel about power, about how one achieves it, waxing on about his philosophy. Fully understanding how many people will die in order to create the Nation of Zon. But through these scenes, we do learn a couple very important things about Silco. Above all else, he respects loyalty and desires power. True power. Which, as he says... You see, power, real power, doesn't come to those who are born strongest, or fastest, or smartest. No, it comes to those who will do anything to achieve it. Now, throughout all of these scenes, he is discrediting Vander, his blood brother, his opposite, the one that betrayed their ideals for a small girl. Vander, who went soft to protect the daughters that he quite by accident became a father to when a bloody revolution that he led ended the lives of their parents. Vander who gave up everything. But then something happened that Silco didn't expect. A small child jumped into his arms. Originally looking like he's either going to stab her and end things then and there, or use the child to find Vi and kill her, Silco is taken aback by what she says. She's been betrayed, and he understands her. Seeing himself in her and the betrayal that he felt towards Vander, he feels some responsibility towards her and assures her that they will make those who left them pay. We'll show them. We will show them all. What follows is a complicated, messy, toxic father-daughter relationship that, by the writer's own admissions, was written to make the audience uncomfortable. I mean, some of these scenes make my spine crawl. Silco, while clearly caring for Powder, doesn't understand how to be a good father to her. And he takes for granted what she does for him just for his approval. Just look at how desperate Powder is for him to approve of her handing him the gemstone, and instead of putting his attention on her and congratulating her, he's absorbed by the Hextech. He manipulates her, forcing her into isolation, creates an alter ego for her that drives her further into insanity and irresponsibility. And when his relationship with Powder is threatened by Vi still being alive, he becomes wild and fixated on eliminating her, and goes on a wild attempt to protect what he has with Powder, hunting down Vi by using people and Shimmer in an attempt to kill her. When this fails, he descends into a raw, feral nature in a scene that still haunts me long after I first saw it. 
I mean, we've seen Silco as a calm, calculated, terrifying villain up until this point. Now we get to see his raw brutality. But when he finds Powder half dead on the bridge, this demeanor of this villainous man cracks. And in stark contrast, he barely looks at the stone in her hand before fully focusing on her, the condition she's in, and then looks on in pure hatred at the perfect city of Piltover that has done this to his daughter. A lot of people have asked questions like, did Silco love Powder? Was Silco a good dad? Was Silco just using Powder? And the answers are, yes, absolutely the fuck no. And eh, kinda? The mask fully breaks when he's at his lowest, bringing Powder to Singe to save her life. He's desperate, unable to bear the thought of losing her. He's willing to do anything and sacrifice anything for her. Keep in mind, this is still the same man that has threatened children, has child workers, and has choked his subordinates with poisonous gas just to prove a point. Through all of his actions, fear tactics, and manipulation, he's garnered enough attention from the top side to warrant a meeting with Jace, in which Jace offers peace and a seat at the table. His nation of Zaun, the goal that he has sacrificed so many lives for, it's now within his reach on one condition. Give Powder as the final scapegoat. This should be an easy decision. Jinx is merely a tool, a puppet he's used for his own gain that has gotten out of hand. Silco desires nothing more than power, remember? To see the nation of Zaun rise with him as its savior. Right? That would be the case if the show wasn't human. Now, we finally come to the moment that Arcane became human. Silco has to face the growing fact that he now understands Vander's position and motives. He now understands why Vander betrayed him. He understands what needs to be done to save the life of somebody who, quite by accident, he has become attached to as a surrogate father. At this moment, we see that he isn't a villain anymore, but a man pushed too far by a society that has left him behind. He's fed his ego for so long as being the savior that will lead Zahn to its independence that he has such little regard for those around him or how he goes about achieving his goals. Hell, he's flooded the lanes with Shimmer, killing thousands of people in the process and destroying the lives of countless more. What's one more life? Soko comes to the realization that his greatest failure was Powder. While he did his best to comfort the child, to develop a separate entity in Jinx away from the trauma that she endured, he failed her and is now sitting in the exact same position as Vander was. His brother, the one that he despised. And now, Silco finally understands. This scene shows that even the most twisted of viewpoints change. Humans change. As much as Silco blames Vander for the downfall of the Undercity, he realizes that now when he's placed in the exact same position as the man that he hated, he is the same. He's failed. What does it mean to be human, and what do I mean by the fact of the show becoming human? Being human means duality. Being haunted and holy, shades of grey, doing the wrong things for the right reason, the right things for the wrong reason, and everything in between. It means failing. The Rhinos of Arcane know what it means to be human. Nobody in the show is this shining example of purity. Everybody has a dark side. Everybody has been blinded in one way or another, either by ambition or their own traumas. The writers get it. They understand what it feels like to be hit in the face with reality, and they convey all of these emotions and mixed motives just so beautifully in a way that just makes my heart hurt. 
Silco's failures are why he succeeds as a character. Not only because he recognizes his failures, but in a twisted way he attempts to make up for his faults. Ultimately, in the creation of Jinx, the final twist of the knife is by his own hand. When Silco threatens Vi's life, Powder acts out of instinct to protect her sister, killing Silco. And in one final breath and a gut-wrenching line, Silco completes Jinx. I never would have given you to them. Not for anything. Don't cry. You're perfect. You could argue that because Powder herself says to Vi that she created Jinx, that Silco is innocent in this matter. And you're correct to a point. You see, Vi may have started Jinx, but Silco completed her. Silco is a complicated character with many parallels in the show. His relationship with Powder mirrors Vander's relationship with Vi. Silco strikes a deal with Marcus and the Enforcers in the same way that Vander did, albeit in a worse way. Going beyond that, there's the parallel of him and Powder versus Vi and Caitlyn. As Caitlyn helps Vi to heal from her trauma and face her past, Silco hides Powder and fuels her mania, driving her into isolation and insanity. I knew that... I wanted to talk about Silco, and I probably will continue to talk about him in the future, as this video was really hard to write and condense down to just one thing. He's just such a fascinating character with this complex, complicated nature, and it doesn't hurt that in my opinion, he has one of if not the best scenes in the show. Silco is the heart of a lot of discussions around Arcane for good reason. He's at times spine-chilling, again the examples I gave earlier when he visits Marcus's home to threaten his daughter, or he chokes an entire room of crime lords, stalking through the room being only minorly affected by the poison just to make a damn point. At times he's demonic and feral as he literally beats to death a follower out of frustration, and at times he's touching as he tries to help a daughter that he doesn't know how to save. Silco might be the villain of season 1, but he also grounds the season in a very real, human, heartbreaking way. He showed the human side of evil. That sometimes it isn't even coming from a place of malice, but simply doing cruel and corrupt actions in the name of justice. And further on down the line, what it means to realize when that way of thinking is sometimes flawed. To abandon it and everything else for someone else only to fail the person that you couldn't let go, the person that you cared about more than anything else. And in one simple scene, managed to encapsulate the moment that Arcane became human.